Hi everybody, I'm Julie Heert, Animal Communicator and Intuitive Coach. And I'm Kate Fogo, Animal Communicator and Intuitive Coach, I suppose. And Body Code Practitioner. Oh, Body Code Practitioner. You do all these wonderful things, don't you? You swim, all these things. Swimmer. <laughs> not very good at self-promotion, Julie. Yeah, I do all these things. You do. <laughs> the list. Wall <laughs> top. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, you do moon charts too? I could do. I was thinking about that actually for the book. Sorry. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, we will yes. talk about that. Okay. Right. So, Julie Hit, is it? It is. It is. Pronounced in the German way. Jawohl. Hier. Say again? It's pronounced in the German way. Yeah, I didn't know there was a German connection. Yep. I am of German and Prussian. I like to say the Prussian part because Prussia no longer exists um, in the 3D. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a German last name. I'm mostly German in my my one grand my my paternal grandparents. My paternal grandmother was raised in a German speaking household, which is okay. inspired me to learn how to speak German. And then by the time I could speak it, she couldn't remember it. So. Gib das hier ein Briefkasten, bitte. <laughs> yeah. That's about the sum of my... Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> your name. It's not your husband's name. It is my name. I'm one of those that did never took their husband's name. Uh, see, I didn't take my husband's name the first time. And then this time, I thought Fogo was really exotic. It's yeah. not. It's not at all. I saw you. English. Yeah. So there oh. we go. I was conned. I, say what? Sorry. I was conned because I thought it was really exotic. I do like it though. Yeah, and there are, it's very unusual. Mm -hmm. I think there's only there is a, a Kevin or a Keith Foggo who's an ex. I don't know if he's a senator or some politician in the states, but he's 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 been, either been indicted or he's in prison for fraud or something. No. Oh. <laughs> but there you go. Oh. Right. Oh, wait, is, I have to say one thing. So the other, because we were talking about music a minute ago. So mm -hmm. the, the idea of not taking my husband's name, and this is my second husband, and neither time I took their name. There was an Everything But The Girl song way back when. I love them too. Um, and she made, uh, Tracy Thorne sings a line, something about, something about his name, but what's wrong with mine. And I always thought, I'm like, hmm. So I never changed my name. Well, I, like when I, I, when I kept my name the first time, it was really hard, as in I had to explain to everybody. Um, I mean, I was a research associate at university, so I dressed it up as, I wanted to be Dr. Patterson. I didn't want to be Dr. Muir. I wanted to be Dr. Patterson. You know, that was a sort of, um, give my dad something because he wasn't going to get any children. Um, and then, but it was like really hard to uh -huh. do it. Like I didn't understand. Um, and then this time, I said this time, I made it sound like it was yesterday, it was 15 16 years ago um I said I changed my name and that was really hard because because all the ID checks had changed and you're like you can't win can you because they changed all the things that even like Sky TV wanted a marriage certificate you're like what do you care as long as I pay the bill I have to prove to you that I'm now Mrs Foggo like ah, I really wanted to swear there we're going to have to come up with um, some rules because I don't know what they are yet yeah yeah, but we'll maybe not swear. Well, unless they. So oh, I say we swear. My gr my maternal grandfather. I always credit Ned with teaching me how to swear, and my RV is named after him. So I say swear away. Okay. okay. We might need categories. We can put warning away. labels on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you alienate someone with a swear word, then they probably weren't meant to be here. Yeah. Okay, Mrs. Hurt, Miss Hurt. Jawohl. Jawohl, Commissioner. Well. Are you ready? I am. I am. When did you first realize that you had any psychic ability and yep. either the same or two parts? When did you tell first tell someone about it? Oh. I 
I believe the first time I really knew that I had psychic abilities was when I took my very first animal communication class. I don't, when I look, when I look back though, like way back and think, did I ever really know? I've always trusted my gut. Like I can, I've always been able to physically feel in my gut somewhere around here when something is good or bad for me and, and, or right for me or not in the moment, right for me, I should probably say it that way. So, um, like menu, like I could read, a, I would look at a menu and I would be, oh, I really want that, but that doesn't feel great. So, and if I would go that way, I would end up getting sick. If I would choose the thing that really felt good at the moment, then I was fine. And I was actually really pleased with it. So when I look back, I had that instinct. And even in my whole life or career, like I've kind of, I've just always followed my gut. And anybody that's ever worked for me, I would tell them every single time, Try because they'd come with some like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I'm like, what does your gut tell you? And I would always try to teach them to, to, to trust their gut. So I, maybe I knew back then, but I, you know, I guess I knew for sure the very first time I took an animal communication class and the very first animal I connected with. So, oh. yeah, but, and that was what, just three years ago, something like that. It wasn't that like actually, it opens up psychic in a much bigger way than even I would have thought of. But I suppose it is also, because like that, what you're saying about food, um, I would never think of that as being psychic, but it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's about trusting the unseen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Yeah, I mean, if people say they have intuition, I mean, if they say yeah. women's intuition, right? Like, and they kind of bluff, you know, ugh, scoff it off or whatever, but it, it is, if you really trust your intuition, that is absolutely the beginning. Imagination and intuition, that's kind of how we're always taught when we first start going into this. So, yeah. And so when, when was the first time you told someone? Well, I won't count my husband because the moment that happened and then we went on a break, it was all virtual, the class was. I came running upstairs, I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. So that that's, of course, a given. So the first time, who else did I tell? I think then I, when I started practicing on some with some friends dogs I would really really careful of who I chose and I can think of the one woman that I chose who had a dog still has the dog that uh, was a street dog um that they found in Atlanta and uh she never she never scoffed at me and I just never but slowly but surely I think Anybody, I was very, very careful in who I told because I didn't, I'm also very, I'm a, I'm more of a private person. Like I, and I prefer, which I'm learning about this too, is some other things develop, but I am a very private person and I'm also very, I hide. So I may not tell you exactly what I think, well, I tell you, but I don't really tell a lot. I, <laughs> I, know. I know, we go against the grain of all this, right? But I, I have learned over the course of uh, the last several years, this, aspect of myself but I can see why I hid how I hid and so this this has all been coming up and out like this idea of my voice and and who I am and not being afraid to share my opinion or share my thoughts or whatever but prior to this though it was all I wouldn't tell a soul to the point so this was one thing so I remember I told my uh the boss that I just had um she made some comp or she asked me something and I just felt this urge to just say, well, this, I'm an, I'm an animal communicator. And she looked at me, she goes, oh, you're one of those. And I said, well, I don't know what you mean by that. She's like, you probably believe that like, like whatever will be, will be and like fate and destiny and all that stuff. And I said, well, yeah, it's not, it's not all up to me. I mean, like there's a whole plan and I have free will to choose, but what I'm supposed to do, the universe is going to continue to shout it at me. And, uh, and I have the option to take it or, you know, things get louder. Oh, I can't believe you're one of those is what she scoffed at me. And I was just, I got it. That was probably the first time I got indignant with her. Maybe, maybe the first time there were a couple of times, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, I, whenever I would, I was very, very careful about who I would share it with. Now I don't. And yet you chose her. 
and yet I chose her. Yeah, <laughs> and I look at that too as something. I was trying to, for as much as she was trying to do this, I was trying to do this, but I was also trying to make her change too. When I look back at that, and there's a whole ballyhoo or ballywick, whatever that stuff too to unpack, but yeah. And on that note, I'm afraid, Julie, I will have to, because I, I thought about this today with Gary. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. It doesn't actually it, it say it. It does that. Oh, bollocks. I thought that was going to be brilliant timing. Basically, it's about, it was about trying to change. It doesn't actually say that in the book, but it was, it was about trying to change people. But I'm sure that it's in there somewhere about not, not my job. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because yeah, but... I'm, I'm learning because Gary's the one who does all that for me, you know, all that. Oh, you're not one of them, are you? Um, I mean, he does it partly in jest, but it gets me every time. He, talk, he talks about um, the occult. And for some reason, that really infuriates me. And yeah, I looked up the occult and it actually is. That is exactly what it means. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was thinking, because I was thinking it's a sort of, he, he knows that talking about religion irritates me. So he talks about it as, as, as it being a religion and that, because that get, really gets my back up. But he used the word occult and I, like, oh, and I got really angry and I went and looked up occult and actually occult is exactly what we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> not, this is not about me, but it's about... Right, relating. About changing people. I thought there was a quote in there from Matt Carnet. Is I just couldn't find it. Oh yeah, no, I, think I read it last night because the I was at the back part of chapter two. So just we're watching, we're reading. Everything is here to help you, and I'm looking up because the book jacket's up there. Anyway, um, and I was towards the end of chapter two, and it talked about your interactions with people and why things mm -hmm. are happening, and that you're not to change. Which I know, and mm -hmm. I'm knowing more here, but um. There's just, there's a little residual stuff that I'm still working through. I feel like everything is pretty much done with that particular human. Um, there's just a little residual stuff every now and then that comes up. So. Well, I'd be interested to know if that's still, we'll talk about this in a couple of years. Yeah, we'll see, right? No, I really do, because she fired me, so we were done. <laughs> I remember, no, it's another story, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing how they can keep, it's like, a, like, like eating smoked fish, it will just keep repeating on you. I speak from experience. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Yes. Um, so your previous, well, you're not Mrs., are you? Because you're Julie Hurt. So you're Ms. Ms. What yep. did your, so you were in marketing. Do you, did you have a title? I was director of account management. Ooh. 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 <laughs> right. So what did your family think of your previous career i.e did they see you as successful and what do they think and how does that compare with what you do now i believe you know i don't know if i really know um if they thought i was successful i believe my mom and dad think that i'm successful i know they that have to, kind of like director well you i know you see, here's the, here's the, the quandary. So they may have very much thought I was successful. I never did. Yeah. And yeah. so I, it wasn't until like, how do, oh, two or two years before. So maybe two or three years ago, someone, a friend of mine that I had met long ago in my career, um, and we're still friends, posted on Facebook this little quiz that you took. And then the first word, word that pops up, that is that is what you are. And it was all like a positivity thing. And the word that popped up was wealthy. And so you were to say, I am wealthy. I have never, ever thought I was wealthy. My husband and I have always lived in tiny homes. We always deny ourselves simple things or big vacations because we never felt we were wealthy in comparison to what I perceive my sister all has or what I perceive other people have. I thought, oh, and so I've, I've watched, you know, my Quicken and all this, you know, I'm a finance minister. I never thought I was wealthy. So the minute I started to say that I am wealthy, I'm like, oh, I think I might be. Like, I I have a nice, I have a nice house. Yes, it's small, but that's fine. So I like it this way. I have everything I could possibly need. I have things I want. And so then things started to shift in that regard. But that took that took 50 years to get to. So. 
how do you how do you think your family feel about what you're doing now I think my I don't you know that's a good question because when I say it to my mom and dad I get absolutely no acknowledgement I don't get bad or good it's just yeah it's kind of it feels like it goes like this I do and that I think there's part of it because my dad when my when his mother died we very much talked about mediums and because my grandfather could feel my grandmother around and my dad would say he could feel his mother around and and I had a connection to her too that and I'm actually her blankets on my lap right now um so we had this spiritual connection we were he was very much raised Catholic. My mom, it's another story, wasn't, but there's a whole story that goes with that. And then I was raised Catholic. So there was this spiritual thing that went with it. So I keep thinking, we're going to have this bigger conversation. And it's not. It's more, I think they just accept it and just go, well, I was always the nutty one, though. I mean, like, the movies I would watch, they would always go, oh, that's a Julie movie. We just stay away from that. Or the books I read, like, oh, that's a Julie. It's like, there's a brand in my house, in my family of Julie stuff. <laughs> Can't go there kind of stuff. Is that, that's a good name. That, is that a good name for a podcast? Julie's Tribe or something? Oh, I don't want to talk about me, though. See, that I'm on a high. Don't make me not. <laughs> I work around. Yeah. I work around Julie. I don't want it to be about me. I want, to, I want to have an interview about me, but I don't want it to be about me. Right. No, nothing. Um, so anyway... But, um, but yeah, but my sister actually, she's let me, allowed me to practice. She called me the other day to sh show she's me. She's let you. She's let me practice. Yeah. Oh, no, I figured I'd pick the words. But then she called the other day and said, oh, can you talk to this dog like right now? And I'm like, um, we'll try. Then I could. But yeah. So she's accepting it. She'll promote my business too with other people. So. Good. Yeah. Good. So there's a long okay. answer. Okay. So have you ever encountered hostility or ridicule from extended family and friends about what you do about being an animal communicator and psychic? I don't, I've never, it's possible that it's existed. I've never seen it. And, and there are some people um, that I reached out to when we were going for our certification that I asked if I could read in and they were people that I trusted. And they were saying, oh, well, let me think on that. That's probably a lot of that. pushback. I was, people I was actually really thought were safe, just not, just not interested. And I'm ashamed to say it actually affected me in that I thought a little less of them, which is terrible. Oh. But, you know, it's sort of like it just makes you realize how much we assume that people that we like and respect believe the same as us. Yeah, and then when I was reading today about the princess archetype, and that is it, isn't it? This entitlement that somehow everybody's going to do what you do, and you don't even know that you expect that. Yeah, and then yeah. you're a little bit hurt. And then I was really taken aback at how upset I was that some people I thought would be interested never criticised it, just weren't, just weren't fussed. Yeah, and it really bowled me over. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it made the for me when. Um, there's two people I'm thinking of that weren't ready for it. One, I totally understood there was grief involved around an animal that had passed and wasn't just right. And I totally, totally understand that. Another one, um, a friend of mine that is very religious, and I say that word specifically, I, I, he was, I could just feel him like backpedaling away from me. <laughs> Which made me like I can feel myself like wanting to curl up and you know recoil and be in a little ball and like then don't you know then oh gosh I'm not worthy it, I mean it just triggers everything everybody has their own way and so I just had to sit with that for a moment and go okay just know you know love and light love you and it's okay and then other people found me now that I look back you know then I'm like oh look then it, it created space for other people to find me that were open to it. And they're, you know, so it's all worked yeah. out. But yeah, I'm not, but I, a direct hostility and ridicule. Um, I may, I might do self ridicule before anything where I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I actually, one of, the, one of the guys I swim with um, was taking the, take the piss out of me. Um, and I was just like, you'll have to do better than that, mate. I'll get all that from my husband. But uh, funnily enough, he came back the next day 
and he obviously a bit sheepish and he said actually I really want to apologise so I don't think like, he wasn't he was just messing about you know there was nothing he was just laughing around I was like you know he's got he takes his dog swimming I was like you know there'll come a day mate where that can't help you and you're going to need someone like me and you won't think it's quite so funny then um <laughs> you know but he hadn't said anything nasty he was just he was just taking a piss but he actually came back and um sorry that's my alarm oh. and uh, we have to seven deep breaths for serenity Judy because it's seven o'clock okay that's what I, I, I have to <laughs> Um, he actually came and apologised the next day and I was like, it's nothing of it. So I, I, and that quite touched me actually, because he was just like, I'm sorry, it was a bit rude of me. And I was like, it's fine, it's really, it's oh. fine. But I, I suddenly had the image of him going home going, oh gosh, I was a bit rude. So, fine, good for him, he learned a lesson. Yes, yes. So, num can you talk now or do you want to leave it? No, I'm still fine to talk, I've got time, yeah. Okay, I can do about 15 minutes because then... Okay. Um, I have to go and bolt my food. I've got a um, channeling session tonight. Not me. Not me. Not me. Just You're not channeling. Me. Someone's channeling for you. Yeah. Well, it's a. It's a. Um, I've actually joined Nick Bros Collective. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's Annick Gallant. I haven't done her before, oh. but anyway, anyway. So here's here's the really really exciting. I like. I love this question. Now I need you to. No holds barred. Do you know what? I don't even know what that means, but you know, I mean, I don't know etymology of that phrase or whatever it is. I don't know what that means, but you know what I mean by that. No holds barred as big if anything, everything, anything and everything in the whole world was available to you, Julie, what would you build? What would I build? And my husband just walked in. He's like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> If I could do anything, what would I build? Well, you don't have to build it. You know what I mean? What would you oh, create? What would you do? Yeah. You know, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Um, I don't. Oh. That's a great question because that has actually been what I've been thinking about since we read the book, I Am, I Create, whatever the whole rest of the title is. What is be to some degree okay so so to some degree in full honesty and transparency i've put it out to the universe to help me find what what that all is i would love i know right now though i would love to write something i don't know what it is yet though whether it's a book or an ongoing something but the ability to write i would love i don't I do a little dabble. I do more than I used to. I dabble, but I would love to be able to write more about what all this has meant for me in an effort to share it with others. I would love to help more people learn the power they have within. Um, I would love to be the animal communicator for Oprah. <laughs> dog animals. oh she's a huge dog lover and she has and a lot of the reason why I well, who knows julie maybe she'll see this and that'll be it we'll send her a copy. I know, and that's it i know um i and the only reason i say that is just to exchange ideas with her for a while i love her series super soul conversation and the reason why i got into or opened up a lot of through this was I would listen to her Super Soul series while I was recovering from my broken leg. And a lot of the people that she had on influenced me or have inspired me since. And so that I think would be super cool. Um, maybe I just looked up and saw a book that reminded me too about, you know, I don't necessarily want to go into what we, you know, how might we think my mom might be doing right now, but, um, there's something in that too for me what we you know what, my mother's health um there's something in there for, for the, in that too like is there something I can I learn from that or something I can do to help others with that or help or my mother with that so I don't know there's a lot I don't have it formulated hmm? want to explain to people what's wrong with your mother or you want to leave it at that no, I don't want to explain because in case she sees this and she doesn't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just going to get tricky, isn't it? All the people that could be watching this. 
I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm full, full disclosure. I'm assuming that nobody who watches this will ever tell my mother. Otherwise, I, I, I will not be able to stop it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I don't. I don't think. Um, you know, we got filmed for the guest house. When I built the guest house on the TV program. Oh, you did. Wait. Oh, if I did. I if saw. You look on, on the Facebook page, if you go and watch video, that's the episode of it. Well, I've seen the video of it. I didn't know you got interviewed for it. No, the, it's a whole program about it. Oh. If you do the click on the watch video on my Facebook page, that's actually the episode with the other lady cut out because they do they do two people and they cut the other person. But there was a bit in there and I was like, oh my God, what if my mum sees this? But because she doesn't even know I had a breakdown, you know. Oh, even okay. before she lost her memory, she it 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 was too hard to my sister tried to tell her once and it didn't go well, so we just left yeah. it. I mean, I think someday I will talk about it, but I don't know. I just can see, yeah, I can see my, the rest of my extended family are like, yeah, in case, who knows? So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So if you had to choose one target audience to get your special message across, who would it be and what would you say? I would love for those who live, I'll say, and this just sounds like me judging them, but for those that are in a fear-based lifestyle, fear-based point of view that um, are coming at life from that and therefore like exclusion happens and um, racism happens, like that type of stuff for those people I would love to break through to them and it doesn't have to be all of them it could be one um to say you can give it all you can give all that fear up and come at things from a place of love and your it just it, things shift so dramatically I just I think we're at a time in the in the life of this planet where we're gonna enter a new renaissance period but but it's going to take us decades to get there. So that's how I would, I would love it if that's how I helped, if I could help one person move from fear to love to help that ripple effect, because we need it. That's what I would like to do. <laughs> Very nice. Um, now, am I allowed to ask my controversial question? Yes. It's my favorite question. So for those of you that haven't been watching Judy on her uh, um, Facebook page and her antics shall we say with the moose yeah now, julie has a very special relationship with moose which started i believe in fear mm -hmm. no it started with no fear then became fear and now you've overcome that fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so you talk a lot about moose julie now in the uk as you know and we have very different views on hunting well most of us have very different views on guns and hunting well, you see i don't know well you like what because you you have gun laws right we do, but nobody nobody except the upper echelons of society would ever have a gun in yeah. stone right and what i oh gosh did you hear the judgment creep into my voice just now it didn't but there maybe. was there was a lot of judgment in there and for that i apologize to everyone um having said that now that i live in a country i want a shotgun but until i moved to the country it's like well, why would anybody ever have a gun and um, what I understand about hunting, um, I think it's abhorrent, to be honest. Um, I know there's lots of reasons, blah, 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 I don't buy any of them. But I believe, you know, there may be reasons for animals to be culled, but actually there's usually, in my experience, in my understanding, there's, probably, there's other ways to manage these things. But um, what do you think about hunting, Julian? I that was a big sign. It is a big sign because it is a big complex question and answer. So I guess that the at the crux of what I currently believe is that human beings are part of a larger ebb of life on this planet. 
And I also believe and have seen that many, uh, many humans are disconnected from that web of life. And when that disconnection happens, there is also disrespect for the other entities in that web of life. I believe that there are hunters and I live in a I live in a part of the country, I live in Alaska, where we have a very large native Alaska, Native American, if you will, I hate to say that too, because that puts, they were here first, <laughs> like there is a native indigenous culture here that subsistence hunt. In order for them to survive, they hunt. They have rituals, they have beliefs that all are part of that ebb of life and respect that ebb of life. That hunting, for me, makes perfect sense. There are aspects of hunting, trophy hunters, for example, that are predominantly white and wealthy, and this may sound judgmental, I'm just demographic, that go to some place like Africa, buy a permit, which does support local people in, for them to be able to eat, but they go to, to kill or call or whatever word, harvest is another word, an animal, so that they have one, done it, two, and this is probably me judging as well, hang it on their wall. And I do not, for me personally, I don't feel the same amount of respect for the animal that, that other people who hunt, not necessarily all natives. I mean, I do know there was one gentleman I worked for at a drug company that I worked for, he was an executive, and he used to come back from the hunt, it, he would go goose hunting or something. And I'd meet him at the door when he'd come in a little bit late and I'd say, oh, what did you get today? Thinking, oh, I'm gonna shame him. And he actually schooled me and said, I do this because, and he would name how he used every aspect of the animal. And I, and I, it made me realize there are ways to hunt that, are, that honor the connection. And there are ways to hunt that don't. And I would, I personally, I'd rather see the former and not the latter. And that's how I feel about hunting guns is a whole nother topic that we could go into too. I don't, that's a whole nother topic we could go into. I have strong feelings that way too, but that's a whole nother thing as well. Yeah. Interesting. And actually, you know, for all my, um, it's like all these things, isn't it? It's very complex. I eat meat. You know, who am I to judge somebody killing, <laughs> killing an animal? And I have um, thought long and hard about not eating meat. I'd love to say that the main reason is that there really isn't anything else I can eat. If I didn't eat meat, um, I'd have to go and live alone in a cave somewhere because my digestion just doesn't cope with <laughs> carbohydrates or beans, especially. <laughs> but that's a happy coincidence for me because I'd still rather eat meat. So I, I do get that. I'm, I'm a total hypocrite. It, um, yeah. yeah. So very, very well placed, Mrs. Ms. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I really didn't know which way it was going to go there. I yeah. really didn't know which way it was going to go. I thought I about the question because I don't want to be judgmental either. I can only talk about We're all judgmental, it. darling. It's just I about know. whether it's we recognize it or not. Yeah, it's a human experience. I know. I just, you know, try not to be. So, anyway, that's my story. <laughs> <laughs>